Hello people, my name is Ferdy and in this video I will show you how you can create a website using the full site editing features of WordPress 5.9. We're not gonna create an award winning website, but I will show you how everything works with the new blog builder. Things have changed and I've been searching like crazy how things work. I put a lot of effort in it. And in this tutorial, I want to show you step by step how everything works, how to add a menu, how to create a sidebar, how to create a footer, how to work with the templates. So I hope you'll uh, enjoy this video. Feel free to like it and subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. And let me tell you one more thing, Gutenberg, the Gutenberg page builder is already among us for more than a thousand days and it's still being improved. It's still getting better. So I think also with full site editing, it can take a while before we're really gonna reap the major benefits uh, it can give us. Right now, I see the potential, but it's, uh, I have to get used to it, but I, I believe it's gonna get better and it's gonna be one of the main ways to create websites in the future. So let's get started. And if you're only here to learn a specific thing, maybe about the menu or maybe on how to get a sidebar, then you can go to the timestamps of the video. And then if you click on one of the timestamps, you go directly to that part of the tutorial. And otherwise we'll start right now from the beginning. So over here, you see a standard WordPress installation of a prior version of WordPress 5.9, probably 5.8. And it looks like this. And if I go to the back end and I want to adjust a few things, I can go to appearance and I see the customizer. I see the widgets area menus and the background over here. I have the new version of WordPress, WordPress 5.9. And if I go to the back end and I go to appearance, I only have themes and the editor. So all those things, the customizer, this one, the widget area for the sidebar or for the footer and the menus where I can create multiple menus and add pages and categories and posts and custom links. I can change the order and assign them to a certain menu. That is gone. Why is gone? Because WordPress is changing into a block based editor. That means that everything in the website should be able to be adjusted using blocks. So there's the old way. There's a new way. We're used to the old way and I will show you how you can do the same thing with the new version of WordPress. So normally when I create a new website, I go to the customizer. I go to the menus. I create a new menu. I call this one the main menu. I assign it to the primary menu area and I click on next and I want to add items. And then over here I can create the home page. and I can create the about page, the services page. Then I want to add a sub menu service. So uh, photography, I don't care. It's not correct. And then I drag it to the right and voila, we have a sub item. With the new version, how is it done? Well, we go to the editor and then I click over here on the WordPress icon and I go to the template parts and I choose the header dark and small. So over here, I see my header. If I want to create a menu and create pages, I need to click over here. And then when I click over there, I see a plus. That means I can add a page. So I click on home. That's the page I want to create. And instead of selecting the first one, I need to click on the plus create a draft page called home. That's for me the fastest way on how to do this. But now I want to create a second menu item. Where is it? It's, it's really weird. I need to hover and then there's a plus, but there's some, that's, that's something else. Well, the best way click over here to the list view on the list view, select the home page and hit enter. That's it. I create an about page and I click on the plus create the draft page about. That's it. I click over here again, hit enter. The third one, courses. Create a course page uh, draft. So, so far so good. If I don't want this area, I click over here or I click on the three dots, remove page list. So home about courses. I want to have a sub item over here. How can I create that? I select it and then there's an icon over here and that lets me create a sub item. I add one. I call this one affiliate marketing, but this time I want it to be custom link. So I don't click over here. I just hit enter. And now you see there's a different icon over here it is a page it is a page. 
And here it is a link. So I click over here again and then I want to make a link. I click here and I create the URL HTTPS app.ferdycorpushook.com. Hit enter. Then I click on it again and now I can open it in a new tab. It's a little bit a weird way to work, but it's just the way how it works. Because if I click over here and I create a new item and I call this one Photoshop I hit enter and I click on the link and I send it to a link. So let's say HTTPS photoshop.com and I want to open it in a new tab. Look at this. What happens? The link is gone. So oh, there are a lot of things I don't yet like. And as I said before, I see the potential, but right now it's, it's a little bit clunky. That's why I created this tutorial. So you can, you know, we cannot, we need to work with this a little bit because all the themes will change to block themes. So I, I think we need to know at least the basics of how things work with the WordPress 5.9 and upcoming versions. Since we're here working at the header, I can click over here, remove the site title and over here, I can add a logo, select files. And on my desktop, I have a logo in red, pink, I don't know. I can select it and then it is displayed like this. So this is the header. This header is displayed on all the pages in my website. So if I don't want to have this area I click over here and I click on remove image. So we have created our header over here. We could do it like this. And then when we, when I close it, and I take a look at the website. It's like this. And if I want to add a logo, I need to go to the customizer site identity, select the logo. I'm showing you this, you know, probably how that works, how it works and then get rid of this. And over here, it works a little bit different. Since we're here at the header, I have to say, I think that the header is really limited. Uh, I can click over here. Then I go to the settings and when I click somewhere, I can adjust the settings. So I will talk later about the, the, the whole Gutenberg builder, but right now I just want to get some things done. I click on the group over here and this, 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 this whole group, a group is a combination of multiple blocks and I can adjust the settings of the group. So over here, I see the colors of the group. I can change those by clicking there. And then the text color is white as you see over here. So all the text will be white. The background is dark. I can make it white, but then I need to make the text dark. So in that way you can change it. And what I really think is, is weird. I cannot change the height over here. So I go to the settings. I can do it using custom CSS, but I just want to make this less high. This area can be deleted. That will remove a little bit of space. So I save it. And now when I go to the dashboard and to the website, there's also something that happens. It's uh, there are a lot of things that can be improved. So if I edit the site, I need to click on the logo. And then I need to make it one pixel bigger. It will link to the homepage and it, I don't want to use it as a site icon. Otherwise it looks a little bit weird. I save it. I save it again. I go to the website. There's no menu. Why is that? Let me show you. I go to the backend. We created some drafts. So if I go to pages, I need to select them all by clicking here, build actions, edit, apply, and then status, change it to published update. Then I go to the settings reading. I want to change this to a static page and that will be the home page. So right now we're getting somewhere. Okay. But what I don't like is the height of the header and I don't know how to change it except by changing the theme. That's the next thing I want to talk about because this is a block theme over here. It is not a block theme. So we have the old way. And still in WordPress 5.9, if I would go to appearance themes and I click on add new, and I search for the uh, extra theme, for instance, it's not block ready yet. It's not a block based theme yet. I think all the theme editors, uh, the, the developers are working on it to make it that way. But right now, not everything is that way. If you, I will show you in a minute how you can find all the 
block based themes. So if I install the Astra theme, look at this. They are back. So still in WordPress 5.9, we can make use of the old version. So if you have the Astra theme and you update to WordPress 5.9, I think everything should be fine. What I want to do, I want to click on add new. I'm going to search for a different theme that is block based. So I click on feature filter or block based. Maybe a better word for it is full site editing. So I click on apply filters and all the themes that are ready for WordPress 5.9 with the full site editing features can be found over here. A theme that I really like is the Brixie theme. So I click on install, then I want to activate it. And that gives me the opportunity to create a new style for the header. So I go to the editor, there I see the whole site. So I see the header, the footer, the post content. So if I take a look over here, I can select the menu, which is the header navigation. And there it is with the sub menu. So I click on save, save, and this menu looks already better than the other one. Uh, when was the last time you used a standard WordPress theme for your website? Well, I think they're always ugly. Sorry, WordPress. So also in this case, I would suggest you go for a different theme. Let me go back to the dashboard, to the website. Now it looks like this. And again, there seems to be a problem with the logo size. So I click on edit site. If I want to change a part of the website, I can adjust it over here or I can click over here and go to the template parts and then I go to the header for instance. And again, over here it looks fine. So I click over here, I make it one pixel bigger and I don't know why I cannot make it smaller. That's something I just don't understand it. But as I said, the, the Gutenberg page builder is already more than a thousand days old. So it takes some time before we get adjusted to this. So I think uh, there's a lot of time to Im for improvement, to uh, have room for improvement and time for improvement to make it better. So I made it one pixel bigger, but if I want this logo to be smaller, I don't know how to do that. Of course, there's a solution. You can upload a logo with a smaller resolution, but it should be able to just decrease size. It is what it is. So I go to the about page go to the courses page and there. If I click over here, I go in a new tab to my course page. So, so far, so good. That's it about the header. We can do the same thing with the footer. We can edit the site and over here I can select the header or the footer and then we can adjust it. Well, the great thing is you will use the same Gutenberg builder for every part of your website, for the header, for the footer, for the blog page, for every for any kind for the widgets. So that's really nice. So it's really important to get to know how the Gutenberg page builder works. And that's what I want to talk about right now. So I go back, I go to the dashboard. So I go to pages and I want to create the home page. Okay. Welcome to the block editor. You can take a look at all this stuff. I will also show you how it works. So right now it looks like this and I can make it uh, and I can adjust a lot of things over here. If I close this, there's the whole area to create my page. So it says over here, type to choose a block. So I can start typing. This is a paragraph block block. I can type a text and when I am finished, I can hit enter. So when I hit enter, look at this, a new area appears. And then there are a few ways to create a new block. I can click on the plus over here. I need to hover. And then I can select one of the six most used, or I can click on browse all. And then I see a lot of blocks over here. And when I hover over it, I see an example of how it can look. So I can have a quote. Gutenberg is getting better and better. By 30 or per sook. And I want to challenge you to pronounce my back name, surname, last name. So go ahead. Another way is hitting enter and then forward slash and then you start typing. So if I say gallery, see gallery button, I see button. So in that way, if you, this is my favorite way when you know all the blocks you have, you just hit enter and then forward slash. And I want to add a gallery. So that's how easy it can be. If I click over here, 
I select this area. What I can do, I can bring it on top by clicking here or bring it down. When you select an area, this area appears. When you don't like it, when you want it to be in the top, I can click on the three dots and hit top toolbar. And then there it is. So when I select this area, I scroll down, it will stick with us. Maybe you prefer that, maybe not. I keep on using that because I prefer it a little bit. When you want to save what you've done, you click on update. And when I want to see the result, I can preview this in a new tab or on a tablet or on a mobile. I click on preview in a new tab. And there it is. This is a paragraph block. I can type a text. And when I finish, I can hit enter. Gutenberg is getting better and better. So what I see, everything is by, by default from totally from the left to the right. So if I make the small screen, uh, screen smaller, small screener, no. <laughs> You see it sticks totally to the left and to the right. Well, we can change it if we want to. I bring it back to the desktop. So that's a way on how to add blocks and, and we can change them, change the order. You can also click on the plus and then this is weird. I, if I scroll down, I cannot get there. So what I can do instead, I can click on the plus over here, the blue plus, and then there are all those areas over here that I can add. I can add a button column. Group, page break, more, row. <laughs> I can create more. Calendar. So if I'm creating a header or a footer or a post template, I can use all the same blocks. But wait, there is more. I click on update. Let me go back. You can also download third party extensions that give you even more functionalities within the Gutenberg editor. So you can add even more blocks. So I add plugins, I click on add new. And then I search for Gutenberg. Don't need to press enter. It will automatically appear. And then I can go for the Gutenberg blocks from Ultimate Add-ons. Brainstorm Force. You see it's really popular. It's amazing. It's free, which I really like. I activate it. And then another one. I go to plugins, add new. There's Cadence. And then there are Gutenberg blocks by Cadence blocks. Install now and I click on activate. So I go back to the pages, to the home page, and now we have so much more options. I can click on the plus over here. Now there are cadence blocks, advanced buttons, row layout, tabs, advanced headings, and there's the text. And if I scroll down all the way, this from Ultimate Advance. Advanced heading, post masonry, sections, testimonials, Google Maps, icon lists, all for free. So I really believe in, uh, I really see the potential here at Gutenberg, but right now they're still in the process of making things better. I personally like to use Elementor or the Divi Builder, which makes it easier to create websites. But I think over time they could become really nice competitors and they will drive each other to become better. And then we are the big winners because we get better tools to create websites. There's something else you can create. If I click on the plus, there's a tab over here. It's called patterns. And this is amazing. Look at this. I can import this into the website. And I think this will be a big thing in making websites in the future because every theme can create their own ones. I think we can create our own ones and save them and use them on multiple websites. I think we can download them, buy them. And look at this. If I Click over here with one click. This is something I have created. If I click on update and I refresh the page, this looks amazing. I can create four links over here. I can change the text. This looks amazing in my opinion. In my opinion. So uh, again, I can click over here and then bring it on top. Update. And now you see how big the menu is. It's too big. But maybe we can fix it. I think so. And then this is starting to look like a website. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of patterns. Uh, of course, there are not that much patterns. And there is uh, a workaround uh, on how to get, get as much patterns as you want. Because this pattern is related to the theme we use at this moment. So patterns, if I click here, I can select certain categories. So I can go for uh, food. I like food. And then I can import this one. 
it looks beautiful. And maybe I see something else I like. Or um, wedding, a, a food wedding website. How great is that? So look at this. This whole area can be imported with one click. And if I update it and I refresh it, wedding dresses. Set gravida orna vestibul turpit kuam urna ali kuam in fuegueta lorem dor calafra. And then you can contact us. Wow. So, and of course, uh, let me see. Oh, no, you cannot see that. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. That's top secret. This is something you can see. If I make it smaller, it is optimized except for this, unless it is the purpose to show it like this. I think so, but I don't like it. I can change it if I want to. So it's optimized. Wow. Did you saw that? Wow. <laughs> That is nice. That wants me to make a wants me to book a wedding, but I'm already married. So it's optimized for all devices. Lunch, breakfast. So patterns is the future of WordPress. That would be a better quote that I can place over here. So since I used the Brixy theme, I can create patterns from the Brixy theme, but I imported this. How will it look if I would change the theme? So I go to appearance themes. I search for a full site editing theme. And then I uh, take a look at something that looks nice. Good then, yeah. I tried to make use of the patterns without activating the theme. That was not possible, but if I activate it, I know that the look and feel will be different. If you take a look, as you see, it, it stays okay, but no, 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 you need the theme. But now, if I go to the pages and to the home page, I can click on the plus, go to patterns, and now, good then, yeah, call to actions. So I can import this one, update it, refresh. And there it is. But now I want to change back to the Brixie theme. So I, I did that. The Brixie theme is active. If I refresh this, how would it look? You see, it looks different, but then I can go to the page again, home page. And I can adjust things by clicking here. So if I go to this button, I can change the color and then I see the theme color. There are five colors over here. If I want to change those, what I need to do, I go out of the page, then I go to the appearance editor. So there's a difference between a single page and the editor. In the editor, you can change everything. So the header, the footer, everything else. Uh, over here, all the templates for the single post, for the page, for the theme page, and then the template parts, you can all adjust it. So I want to go to the site and then there's a button I don't see at the page editing area. And that is this one. So if I click on styles, I can change the typography. Well, what I really, really, really don't understand, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe you know the answer. I don't know how to change the font. So right now, okay, there, okay, there are a few fonts, but why are there not that much fonts? So you see for the text, I can change it. Well, never. What, where is a nor I, I, I'm looking for. Okay. This one system font It's it's better than what there was. Okay. I can change. I can make the website bigger, make it, can make a default. But I cannot, yeah, the, 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 the selection is really limited. That's what I don't like. And then the links, I can change it. But um, I was going over here for the colors. So I click over here. Then I go to colors over here. And then there's a palette with a few colors. And there are five main colors. And if I want to change those, I cannot click over here and change them. But what I can do, I can click over here, edit colors. 
There's the foreground, the background. Well, I'm okay with that. And then there's the primary color. Well, I want to recreate the website ferdycorp.com. So what I can do, I have this tool over here, the color pick eyedropper. And with that tool, I can grab a color, copy it. And then over here at the primary color, uh, you would say, click over here and then paste it. But you need to click over here. Otherwise, you copy this color. Then you can paste it. And there it is. Then I go to a different color, copy, and actually those are the two main colors I use in my website. Uh, so I can go to secondary color and I paste it over there. And then everywhere in the website, I want to adjust the color. I see those colors and you can also add multiple colors. So I scroll down, click over here Then I can add this green and I can call this blue just for fun, but uh, green is better or you can say, uh, Every link should have this particular color. And then when you use this color or one of those colors and later you or your client says, Hey, I want to change my colors. You just have to change the colors over here and they will be changed throughout the whole website. And that will save you time. And don't you all want to save a little bit of time, I guess. So now when I go back to the dashboards, to the page, to the home page, then I scroll down. And over here at this color, I go to colors as our already changed. This is the front end. I mean the text. So I need to go to the background and there I can adjust it. So that's one thing. And since we're talking about uh, those colors, let me go back one more time. If I go to um, appearance editor again, right now we only adjusted the colors over here with this beautiful icon. You can also adjust the typography. Well, as I said before, there are not much fonts that will increase probably, but over here, there are blocks. Now we can change all those different kinds of blocks. So let's go to the button. If I want to add a button over here, I hit enter forward slash button, the regular button. By default, it looks like this. Well, I like it. I like it. But what I can do, if I want to, I click over here, I go to the blocks, I go to the button, to the colors of the button, and I can say by default, the color of every button should be pink and the text should be white. And what you see, this color just changed. So throughout the website, if I did not adjust the default colors, all those colors will be adjusted to this particular color because I decided to do so over here. You can also do the same with all the other things you see over here. So if I go to columns, I want to use columns a lot. I can say that the background should automatically be a certain color or the layout. No, no padding for instance. So that is what you can do over here. So with all the blocks, there are the default blocks that comes with the Gutenberg editor. You can make sure that everything has predefined styles and that can save you a lot of time. Don't we all want to save time? So what I want to do now, I want to talk about creating a page using the, using the Gutenberg editor. So I go to pages home. And if I want to get rid of this, I can click over here, remove the cover or I click over here, right uh, top. I go to the code editor, click here, command A, backspace, update. And now when we go to our website, it is totally empty and we can start to create something from scratch. I bring it back to the visual editor and I want to start over here with a column. So uh, the tutorial is not about how to create a website from scratch, but I want to show you how we can build something like this. I have to say it's a little bit harder than when you uh, do this with uh, Elementor or Divi, but I just want to show you just to get a hang of it a little bit. So I have this image over here, this text over here. I think this is around 70, this is around 30%. So I want to divide it like that. Two columns. Great. Over here, I want to add an image. I can upload one or go to the media library. See if I have it already. 
I select it and over here I want to have a heading and then I want to paste this text over here like that. Before I continue to work on this, I want to update it and refresh the page and this is how it looks. It is full width. I want to bring that back to the width of this website. So what I can do, of course, I can keep this open. I can close this for now and I can go to the column area and then I see those options. I can turn this into or transform this into a group. That sounds even better. So now there's a group and within that group, I have two columns. So if I select the group area and I click over here at the settings icon, I want to use the default layout so it will inherit that. That means it will be totally from the left to the right, not full width. So let me update it and refresh the page. Well, that's a little bit too much. I want to bring it back to this area. How can I do that? I go to the group, click over here, and bring this to the width of the website. And then I want to go to the columns and I want to do the same thing. Click over here, and bring it to the width of the website. If I update it and I refresh the page, it is now in the width of the website. Now I want to go to the group, go to color, and this is the text color. I can change it and then it will be changed everywhere below in the group. So also in the columns, in the text. So if I would do that, this text will turn white. Let me clear that. And then here's the background and I want to use this background and then I want to use a white text. So if I create any text over here in this group, this will be turned white automatically. Unless I go to this column and I say that all the colors should be black. So, so you see, it's like a cascading here. I can have a setting, but the setting below the group will override this setting. So if I would go to this column and I again say that this should be white, then this setting is overruling this setting and this setting. So in that way, uh, the more you go down into the, the cascading process, the more important those settings are. Okay. Update refresh. So this is what I want to have. This is how it looks. It's so big right now because, or so high, because this image is in full width, full height or both. So if I want to bring that back, I can click over here. I can change it to a smaller size, but I like to keep the full size because of the quality. And then over here, I can bring it to 50%. Let's say 50. Then it's a little bit smaller. I want to have a little bit more space and a little bit less space over here. Uh, ideally zero, but I could not manage how to do that. If you know how to do it, let me know, please. If it's possible without CSS, custom CSS. So I go to the group, then I go to padding at dimensions. I uncheck this and over here, I want to have top padding of 40. Tap twice, tap twice, tap twice. Update, refresh. Okay, so far so good. So the only thing is, okay, this area, I don't know how to get rid of that. There is no area like that. Then I want to have a start here area. And when I click on it, I scroll down. So I want to create something like that from scratch. So you get the hang of it, how it works. But before we do that, I click over here, hit enter, forward slash button, and I go for the advanced button. I can do two things. Of course, I can do more things, but I can make a subscribe button and people will subscribe directly when they click on that button, when they confirm it, or I can make a button like this that will uh, let them scroll down over here, or I can create two buttons. Hey, why not? So um, maybe a good moment to ask you to like and subscribe. If you like this video, at least like it. It will cost you nothing. Subscribing also nothing. It's free. And then you can learn more about WordPress. I do my best, especially in 2022 to get the most out of it. I want to reach 500,000 subscribers. Now I'll do my best to create the best tutorials possible. So I dive deep into the subject in order to give you the best. So uh, if you want to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials, feel free to do that. So I bring this to the left and I want to go to the button settings. It's a default one or it's a theme. Well, I like the theme one because I have, I would like to have a background color instead of uh, 
uh, a border and a transparent background. So the font size, uh, first let me say subscribe. Okay, then I can increase the font size until I'm satisfied. It seems to be that it's not always a perfect representation of how it will look on a live website. And I'm happy with that. So great. The button size, I can make it bigger. I can make the, the size fixed. Well, let me do it, uh, put it on automatic right now. You can also make it a full width. And then there are the color settings. The text color is okay. It's white already. The background color is also okay with me. I can have a gradient color if I want to. And there can be a border. I can have a shadow. I can change the margins over here. And then over here, I want to select or search for YouTube and use this play button. I want the play button to be a little bit bigger. So I can increase that. And then I can bring it to the left. Gap between, gap between them. I don't see anything changing, but I can increase or decrease the ad, app over here. I want to bring it a little bit closer. When people hover over it, I'm okay. To, you know what? I'm not okay with it. I want to go to the background color. Uh, let me go to YouTube. Grab the red color of YouTube. And then over here at the background type, I paste the color better. Then when people hover over it, paste it again, make it a little bit darker. Okay. I like it. Subscribe or a second button. So let me go to button two. I like it that they copy everything. So over here, I can say start here and then I say hashtag start here enter so this is a link right now it will be an anchor link so when we click over here we go down a little bit color as, as I said before uh, if I want to change this text typography I only can change the size well let's make it a little bit um, smaller not that much smaller medium or what I prefer in pixels. Forty. Update. Let's see if it sticks in the middle. Um, it seems not. So I go to the column. Make sure everything is aligned in the middle. Okay, you know what? If you're gonna play it like this, you can get it like what's this? What what is this? I don't know. I'm happy with this. So subscribe in the new tab to Ferdy Corpsook and start here. Uh, there's no link yet. Oh, if people hover over it, really important. Click over here. Hover background color and then it can be the red one. Refresh like that. And unfortunately, it's still not possible, it seems, to change this font. I can do that using a custom CSS. Oh no, it's okay. So, this is what we've created from scratch. It's okay. Let's go back to the page. This area over here. So, again, I can work with columns. Three this time. Then I want to start with an image. Media library, I already have those images. Um, no, I don't. Upload. And there they are. Three thumbnails. Create a website. Sorry, it's 2021. I should update it to 2022, even though this tutorial is still from 2021. I can link it to, to this tutorial. So I click over here. I grab the link. And then over here, 
I say open in a new tab. Then I can go to the list style. Hit enter over here. And then there's the paragraph. So I can grab this text. Bring it to the center. And then I want to have a button. So forward slash button, advanced button, watch tutorial. What do I say over here? Yes. So I go to the settings. We've been over this, so um, I'm okay with this. I can link it. I should link it to the same. Link, of course. And then over here again, new window update. When people hover over it, it will look like that. Update, and instead of dragging and dropping everything from here to here, I can just click over here, duplicate it, and duplicate it. And then over here, column, remove, remove. Then I go to the columns area. Let me update it and see how it looks right now. I mean, over here. So it's full width. And of course I need to change the images. So I click on replace, media library, WooCommerce and then over here, replace affiliate marketing. And I should, of course, uh, change also uh, the links. So what I did before with the columns, I can turn it into a group and I do the same thing. I inherit the default layout. Then over here, I change it to 12 the pixels and then at the columns i also change it to 1200 pixels update refresh if it's not refreshing somehow you can do it like that so i want to click over here and then go over there then i need to grab this link over here start here and then i go to the group Scroll down to advanced at the block settings. The anchor is start here. I update it. Let me close it again. Preview in a new tab. And if I click over here, I go to this area. Okay, one more thing. I can go to this group or to columns and then I click over here and I say insert before. So there's a paragraph forward slash heading. And I can say, make your first website, make your first website. I can, of course, bring it to the center. I'm happy with the H2 area. Uh, I can change the color to this one and I can change the, the size to let me see. 40 also or 30. Refresh. And again, I think I need to preview it again in a new tab. Yeah, and then I see the right color. So, and then I see the right size. So I click on start here. So that's how you can create a page. And yeah, I can continue if you want to. Um, but I don't know what you're saying right now. So I think I should just continue. I don't want to make the tutorial too long. Uh, what I can do now, I can just, uh, okay, let me do it really quick. Heading. There's the heading. What kind of text? Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, right now I try to do this as fast as possible. Hit enter. There's a paragraph by default. Copy it. Paste it. Uh, over here, 
duplicate and drag it over here below. There it is. I bring it to the center. I bring this to the center and I bring this to the center. I change the font size again to 30. Then I want to group it. So transform to group. Okay. And then I drag this below and I drag this below at the group. I inherit this color background and then the text white. I see I also have the second button. Yes. Let's see how we are doing. Again, it's uh, maybe it's because I I host this on my own computer. Okay, let's add a, add a little bit of a um, padding. How about that? Okay, and now the latest one. Recent tutorials. Well, I have to say, I have to be honest and confess that I added a few posts, posts over here, so I can showcase this to you because I want to show my latest posts. So I say forward slash latest posts, posts. Hard to pronounce. Okay, perfect. No, I don't like it. Of course, we can adjust things over here at the settings of this particular block. Do I want to show the post content? No. The author name? No. Do I want to display the featured image? Yes. How do I want to display this as a large image? And the width should be 400 in my opinion. I want to change this to something like that. I want to add a link to the featured image. I want to order this by from oldest to the newest. I want to show all the categories, the number of items. I want to have six and I want to have multiple columns. So over here, I can change this from a list view to grid view. And then over here, there's a new option columns. Okay. And then it looks really weird over here, but I think if I go to the website, it looks okay. But again, um, I want to transform this into a group and inherit that looks really weird. So I go to the group, I bring this to 1200 and then I go to this one, I bring this to 1200 update preview again. And now it looks better. Uh, keep in mind that you should have uh, all the images with the same aspect ratio. If I want to do this manually, I go to the back end of the website to media. I search for card flows. I want to edit the image I want to crop it with an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. I make a beautiful selection. It's already there. I drag it to the center. I click on crop. I save it. I close it. I go to the home page. I scroll down and now it looks better. So when I click over here, I go to that post. And when I click over here, I go to this post and I see it all looks the same featured image, a title, and then there should be the content. It's dummy data, so you don't see the actual blog post. But if I would go to posts and search for convert kit, this one is real. This is how it looks by default. Not that much, but hey, there's a little bit of text that gives us a little bit of reference. So the homepage looks okay. How does it look on the smartphone?
I should increase the padding everywhere. Also over here. But let's take a look at it. So I should go to all these uh, groups. Let me close them. Group one. Uncheck this or this one. Okay, 40 and then 20, 20, 20. 20, 20, oh, not 29, all the groups, this one is 50 and 20, 50, uh, 20, 20, update, So that's better already as you see much better it's my fault that i removed it everywhere and if i want to fix this i could make it a little bit smaller so over here i go to the latest posts i change 400 to 300 and that should fix that so i want to add a page let me go to the back end to settings reading and there is not even a blog page so i will create one page blog or tutorials publish it i go to the back end to settings reading i select the tutorials page save it then i go to the appearance editor I click over here, hit enter, and I want to search for the tutorials page. And I select it over here, save it. So if I go to the tutorials page, this is what we see by default. Okay, if I want to edit this, if I want to get rid of this area, I click on edit the page. What well, seems to happen? Nothing. I cannot edit it over here. So I'm smart. So I think, oh, edit site. And then I still don't see how I can edit this area. So I go to appearance editor and I go to the templates and I think, aha, there you are. Index display post. So I click on it. And then it looks different than what we see on our website. So I found a workaround. Go to settings, reading, bring back your home page, home page displays to your latest post. And now on the home page, we see this area. And now when we edit the site, we can edit the blog page. So I go to this area, collapse the header. This group over here, I want it to be gone. I can scroll down. I want to get rid of this group. Remove the group. Okay, so I only have this area. If I adjust it, so I click over here. I can adjust things over here. So let me see where we are right now. We are at the footer. I collapse it. I want to go to this group. This group contains all the information of every blog post. So I can save it. I can go. No. Command. Click. Command. Click. Go to the website. So right now it looks like this. We have the date and then the title. And then if you have one, an excerpt. So if I would change this. Bring it here. I want to remove this column and I save it. It is saved everywhere. Look at this. So now there is no column anymore. It's one area. Okay. Another thing I want to do. Go to the group. 
go to the color in the background color i can change it well that's a little bit too much i can make it really light yes and then I want to increase some padding. I save it and I save it. And if I refresh this, okay, it looks like that. Okay. Now I go to the home page. Over here, I refresh it. It looks like that, but now it's the home page. So I want to bring it back at the settings. Reading, statistic page, static page, and then the tutorials page as the posts page. So now I see the home page, and when I go to tutorials, I see this area. It's a weird workaround, but right now it's the best one I could find. So we're talking about full site editing. We created this using the Gutenberg editor. We created this or adjusted this using the Gutenberg editor, the footer. So I can change the footer if I want to. I go to appearance themes or sorry, editor. And I can select the footer. I can click on the plus, go to patterns, search for Brixie footers. Well, it's the only one they have. Let me show you what we can do. We can go to the footer, to, to, to the group, change the background to this one, change the colors to this one. Then there's a link over here and that color of that link should be white or maybe this one. Then I go over here, colors, link colors, make it white or this one. I think this is better. I can get rid of the logo. I can get rid of the spacer and these icons. I want them to be in white. I can have the site title if I want to remove it. I can change this text over here. So if I would go to my website, I have a few links. Of course, if you have those links, you should also create those pages. So I paste it over here and then over here, I go to color and then the link colors. I want it to be like that. Hey, I feel like bringing this to the center. Let me save it. Why is this not happening? Okay, let me see. I am over here. I go to the row. Then I can bring it to the center. And of course I can change things over here. I can add my logo. And now if I save it and I go to the website, This is my footer on every single page. So here we have tutorials. If I go to a tutorial, so I go to the second page. Then it looks like this. We can also adjust this area. How? Well, I go to the back end. I go to appearance editor. And I click over here, I go to the templates and I want to go to the single post. I click over here and now I can adjust this. And what you see over here, this is the featured image, the post title, the post content. That is exactly what we see when we go to a blog post. We see the header, the featured image, I mean the title and then the content. So if I adjust this. So let me show you. 
I go to the, let me see. I go to the group and I make the background red. And I save it twice. And I refresh the page. It is red. So everything we change over here will have an effect on the display of our blog post. So let's see what we can do. Over here, there's a separator. I want to get rid of that. There's also a spacer. I also want to get rid of that. Save it. Better. Now I can change the color to a really, 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 really light one. So here at the back background, I can choose the color blue. Then I click on it and I can make it something like that. So you see it's not white. Okay. What I can do now, there's a group over here, this whole group. And on top of that group, so I click on insert before, I want to add a column. Two columns, 70 by 30. Great. What I want to do, I want to drag the featured image over here. And the post title over there. And the post content also over there. And then this whole column, I want to give it a color white. Oh, this is the text. If you click again, you clear it again. So the background should be white. Let's save it. Okay. And now you see this is white. I like it so far. What I don't like is the, the, the padding over here. So I click on the title or the margin. I want to increase it. Twenty. Refresh. Okay, better. Or I align it with this text. It's even better probably. Or I put it like this. Sometimes it uh, doesn't refresh. Then I close it. I don't have to close it. Oh, I, did, I had to save it twice. So that's why I did not see it. I keep on learning. Tutorials. Convert kit. So there's the title. There's the image. And then there's the text. Okay. And now we can have a sidebar. And you see below the text, uh, the normal colors appear again. So I can have a sidebar over here. That's the other part of the group, or the, the, the second column. So let's see, where am I? Column one, collapse it. There's column two. I can click on the plus and search for latest posts. And maybe that one from Cadence is better. So let's try this. I did not prepare this. I want to select post, newest to the oldest. Number of items, how about five? No offset. Include all the categories and tags. Wow, there are so much more settings. I want to have one column image. The top the style is boxed. Aspect ratio 16 by 9. Wow, I like this. Category settings. We want to show that or not. I want to make the title a lot smaller. It's actually quite big. So what I can do, I can go to the column and increase the padding. But uh, what I want to say is that when you do that over here, it will be displayed. Pretty nice. So to wrap it up, um, I showed you how to create a menu like this. 
how to create or adjust a footer, how to create a homepage using the Gutenberg editor, how to create everything using the full set editor. We talked about templates, how to adjust this template, how to adjust the single post template. Um, of course, if I take a look at my website made with Elementor, it was easier to make something like this. But I think over time it will become better and better and it will help us to create amazing websites. So one more thing, <laughs> uh, uh, edit, let me see, edit the template. So I go to the dashboard appearance editor. I just don't like how big everything is. So I go to the templates, to the single post, to the list. There's the group. I inherit the default layout. Then I go to the columns. 1200. Let's see how that will look. And now it looks better in my opinion. So this is what we have created using WordPress 5.9. I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, great that you came until this point. I hope you learned a ton of stuff. Let me know what you think about uh, the tutorial. Are there ways how I can improve because I want to become better in what I do. And uh, I enjoyed it, even though in this tutorial I had to do a lot of research, try a lot of things. But in the end, I'm, I'm happy with uh, what I have taught you and I hope you're happy too. Let me know and feel free to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and then um, you'll see me in the next video. Bye bye.